Guyana's rich natural resources can be found mainly in the hinterland. Despite this endowment, the hinterland remains underdeveloped and plagued by poor infrastructure and environmental hazards. The coalition government is working on an inclusive and integrated plan to close the gap between the hinterland and the coastland. This involves improved internal communication, air drums, bridges, causeways, highways, stellings and telecommunications, and the public services such as education, health, human safety, and social security. It also focuses on creating stronger regions administered by capital towns in order to develop hinterland and rural communities more rapidly. This week on Guyana 411, we examine how this plan is being pursued in Region 9, Upper Takatu, Upper Essequibo, to catalyze greater economic opportunities, particularly at the community level. This is Guyana 411. I am Glendon Greenwich. Thank you for joining us. Five-year action plan to transform agriculture production in Region 9 would see optimization of the intermediate savannas. It will cover aquaculture and livestock development, crops and small ruminants and more. The main agricultural produce in Guyana are rice and sugar. These crops are cultivated mainly on the coastland. Most cash crops are also cultivated along this narrow coastal belt. With the coast being at sea level, at high tide, and rising sea levels due to climate change, this coastal belt is under threat. Already, flooding during heavy rainy season has become a problem. Realize this, the government is implementing strategies to introduce large-scale farming into the intermediate and Rupununi savannas. Care is being taken to utilizing sustainable methods that will not adversely affect the environment. The Rupununi, Region 9 being the largest area, the largest, the largest region in Guyana. The question of clearing the land, forested land for agriculture, is contraindicated, largely because the world is moving away from that, in the sense that clearing of forests, which is the, defined as the lungs of the earth, is um, wouldn't be an attractive proposition to Guyana or to our partners abroad. So these two savannas are the areas to move to. And government's policy is centered not only in rationalizing our production coastally, improving our drainage systems, but also in developing these new areas of activity. And that really is government's trust, or will be, over the next five years and beyond. Feasibility studies to look at proper land use available water resources and other factors would have to be undertaken. The idea is not only to reduce the dependency of food supply from the coastland, but to have the interland producing some agricultural produce for the coastland and for export. We've had studies on the road systems that need to be put in place, the water resources availability, the question of allocating land, including catering for biodiversity. And with regards to the Rupununi Savannas, there are some preliminary studies that have been achieved and we are working on completing a proper feasibility study within another year or so. The hinterland communities, which are very fertile but unfortunately inaccessible, we are doing development plans to see to what extent those communities could become totally self-sufficient, so the need to supply food or fly in food supplies at tremendous cost is eliminated. So in a nutshell, that is how government views the development of agriculture in the, in, the, in the country. The Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CARDI, has partnered with the Ministry of Agriculture to help Region 9 realize its agricultural potential. Chairman of Region 9, Brian Alicock, says that CARDI will be focusing on spices. However, they have already expressed an interest in establishing a coconut plantation. Alicock says that such initiative will be beneficial for Region 9 residents. Mainly our people 
accustomed to subsistence level farming. Now we are trying to expand, open them to this larger farming so that they could, some of them would take it on and go with it. They would benefit because, you know, if you establish a plantation in a, a village structure, the entire village would benefit, right? So we are looking in that line. Aquaculture is another aspect of the developmental plan for the Upper Takatu Upper Esikubu region. This will serve as a food source for the region. It is receiving support from the Fisheries Department of the Ministry of Agriculture. If we don't get a proper rainy season, we have less fishes. Because all the fishes spawn in the river, and there's so many predators, including man, <laughs> who reduce the level of fishes, right? But when it comes and overflows the banks into the swamps, you know, the marshes and so, the fishes would go and spawn there, leave their young, and then go back to wherever they come from, you know, and then you have, in the dry weather, you got a lot of fishes all over. So, but we're trying to educate people. We could do our own rearing of fishes in aquaculture. You know. So now we got to think about equipment to do that. And then, of course, uh, fisheries development uh, division with the Ministry of Agriculture, they are very willing to assist us so we could go in that line. Additionally, the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, GLDA, is looking to develop farm animals that would thrive the savannas. Head of GLDA, Nigel Kamabach, says the authority has taken over the livestock part of the Ibini station. What we have at that location are a number of breeding animals, and we are looking mainly at breed development at the Ibini location. We've got um, the purebred Zebo Kepper. We've got the Beefmaster, Brangus, uh, and, and the Simmental are four of the breeds of cattle that we, that we have at Ibini that we are in the process of working with, looking at the production parameters of these breeds on um, savannah, savannah type, type systems. Sheep at the Bini station, we concentrate wholly and solely on the Barbados Black Belly breed. Um, it is the national repository of the Barbados Black Belly breed, and we really don't allow any other of the breeds, the other breeds, to be held at that station because we feel that it should be kept as the national repository of the Barbados black belly breed of sheep. The five-year strategy is expected to improve food security and nutrition security, reduce poverty and enable sustainable and integrated development of local communities in Region 9. The lack of infrastructure continues to affect hinterland communities. In Region 9, the construction of the Linden Lethem Highway is among many options being pursued as part of the plan to correct this situation. The hinterland communities have always been forgotten and segregated from the coastland. For years, the communities hardly or never had electricity and suffered from poor infrastructure. The coalition government, when it assumed office, pledged to provide a better life for hinterland communities. This means that emphasis will be placed on providing sustainable energy for lighting, along with development of roads and bridges within the region. To ensure residents benefit from electricity, power has been supplied to the relatively new culvert city housing scheme. Additionally, the Hinterland Electrification Company Incorporated is working to ensure that homes without electricity receive power. Chief Executive Officer Hinterland Electrification Company Inc. Horace Williams explains. To extend electricity to a new housing scheme called Culvert City. That housing scheme will have over 600 um, house lots. And so we've already started the procurement process to get materials to extend the existing network to that housing area so that the house lots, when they are occupied, the households would have access to the electricity supply. 
To ensure that technical capacity is in place to meet increasing electricity demands, efforts are on the way to transform generating equipment to a new power station in the industrial site at Bonn Success Lethem. So we wanted to reduce um, noise pollution within the populated area. So um, we relocated the power system to the industrial site area. Now the industrial site is being developed as well to, to hold um, industries, uh, factories, etc. And so there's a plan also to extend electricity to, to that area. As a matter of fact, we already have a, a, a preliminary design to construct the network within the industrial area to supply whoever will be establishing facilities within the industrial uh, center. Section of the distribution system are being modified to facilitate improved generation from the new location. With the technical upgrades being completed, consumers will benefit from a more efficient demand cycle. To complement measures in place, the Mokomoko hydropower plant will be upgraded, thereby improving the supply of electricity to the region. We are actively pursuing that. I, I can tell you that recently we have invited proposals for the redevelopment and one company has been shortlisted for further negotiations towards a, a possible um, either EPC contract or um, a PPA arrangement um, for the redevelopment of the Mokomoka Hydro to supply electricity to the grid um, to uh, supplement the diesel generation that we are doing right now. So the main reason for, for upgrading the Mokomoko feeder is, is to facilitate the transfer of power from the Mokomoko hydro when it's developed um, to, to the grid in Lethem. As the administration injects large sums of money to ensure the electricity supply of central Rupununi is met, similar investments are being made to use renewable energy sources to supply communities that are too far from the electricity grid. With plans in train to answer the electricity needs of the region, similar plans are being done to answer the need of established road networks. Better roads will mean greater interconnectivity among the Region 9 communities, opening up opportunities for personal and community development. Having road networks provide farmers with the necessary infrastructure needed to transport produce to the market. Region 9 Regional Chairman Brian Alicock sees the benefits this will bring to the region. It would be uh, easier access in terms of the, they're looking at what they have to market to bring to the market closer, which is lesson, and then at the moment we are working towards a partial scope agreement between the two governments. So that uh, actually the Brazilians have listed 200 items that we could take across. But they want to see our list, what we want to take across. So, because they have to safeguard their market too. Right. You know? And then even though they might say, okay, we'll bring this, but they say, well, okay, this is a uh, fruit that would attract the caramel fruit fly. So you can't bring it across. <laughs> you know? So these are the things that we're trying to work it through. In this regard, Coordinator Work Services Group Ministry of Public Infrastructure Jeffrey Vaughan says that a series of rehabilitation works will soon commence along key aspects of the Linden to Lethem Access Road. Key bridges along the path will also be constructed and rehabilitated. Region 9 basically has quite a number of works that will be done on the main access road and that is basically from mile zero to mile 65, which is the Mabruma lot one, as in region nine area. Um, we will be doing some rehabilitation works on that aspect of the main road. Also in region nine, we will be doing some rehabilitation works from mile one to the five, which is Korpukari, going to mile two, seven to six, which is Tamashinga Bridge area, and that is known as lot three. Um, also, you have the Sand Creek Bridge across the Rupununi River, which is approximately 750 feet in length. We will be doing some works on those bridges in Region 9. And the reconstruction of the Marabonta Bridge in Region 9 
that is also where we will have some focus being done. The rehabilitation work will result in easier access to Lethem and other hinterland communities and also serve as a cheaper mode of transportation to the region. We will have to do a lot of leveling of the road and also grading and shaping. So those are what will be done. In terms of the bridges, it can be replacing um, some of the stringers, replacing decking. Um, where we have to do wing walls, we'll be doing wing walls. Laterite type of material is being used to prevent the roads from eroding and getting potholes when vehicles use them during the rainy season. These roadworks slated for the region are also geared towards boosting trade with neighboring Brazil. The Region 9 road and electricity rehabilitation projects are several scheduled for the hinterland region as part of government's effort to promote economic growth. Around 10% of Guyanese population lives in the hinterland. Many of these people live in poverty. Their housing conditions are inadequate and many do not have access to safe drinking water. This is one of the areas earmarked for fast-track development. In keeping with the administration's vision for all communities to enjoy a similar quality of life, residents in Region 9 are set to benefit from the implementation of the new sustainable housing project. It is being funded by the Inter-American Development Bank through a U.S. $3.1 million loan. This follows the first intervention by the state that was specifically dedicated to addressing interland housing needs. The Hinterland Housing Pilot Program was implemented between 2009 and 2015. Senior Community Development Officer, Central Housing and Planning Authority, Donald Bess Bascom, explains. This project uh, has the objective of improving the livability of low-income households in pre-selected uh, Hinterland communities with an aim of improving uh, access to housing, portable water, sanitation and also promoting women's empowerment. The new sustainable hinterland housing project has two components. One provides for the construction of full houses measuring 20 by 25 in size together with pit toilets and rainwater harvesting system. Component two allows for the replacement of derelict thatch roof with zinc roofs complete with rainwater harvesting system, as well as toilets. Senior Community Development Officer, Central Housing and Planning Authority, Donnell Best Bascom, tells about the positives of the program. This program was successful in the past because of the large focus on community participation. The homes are actually designed by the community. Um, the labor is procured from, from the community, as much of the materials as possible is also bought from the community. The new sustainable hinterland housing project will be implemented in communities of Quatama, Kotoka, Masara, Karasabai, Hiawa, Sand Creek, Pataranao. All the communities will not be seeing housing construction commencing in 2016, uh, but they will have houses and roofs done by the end of the program. However, in each community we are looking at at least having the initial conversations around beneficiary selection and pro promotion of the program so all of the communities will have an opportunity to interface with the program beginning this year. Meanwhile, in Central Region 9, the focus is on allocating residential house lot and pursuing the issue of regularizing housing areas in Tabatinga and Culvert City in Letem. Minister within the Ministry of Communities with responsibility for housing, Valerie Shah Patterson, talks about the housing outreach that was conducted in the region last February. When we went to, um, to Letem earlier this year, I think it was March, um, I only had 48 house lots in Culvert City. And as I said earlier, all 48 were allocated. What we found, however, in a place called Tapachinga, um, we had a lot of regularization to do with squatters. And we were able to regularize about 50 persons. And in regularizing, because what was happening there the, the house lot was in one person's name and the house that is on the lot was somebody else's house. And so we had to do a lot of reallocation. So about 50 persons um, we regularized and we had to move some persons to Culvert City. 
accompanying the development in the housing are several interventions to improve and expand access to water in the region. 25 new wells are being drilled in the region. Eight of the wells are being undertaken by the Guyana Water Incorporated in collaboration with the regional administration. A similar number will be sunk by the Brazilian Army, while five will be drilled by the Basic Need Trust Fund and four will be done through the Regional Democratic Council. GWI Executive Director for Infrastructure Planning and Implementation, Ramchand Jailal, explains how the water company is working with the regional administration to execute its eight projects. We have entered into an agreement with the region for a Brazilian contractor to undertake drilling of eight new wells. And this is as a result of the, the El Nino situation that we have encountered earlier in 2009. 16 and uh, coming from 2015 and as a result there were emergency needs in region 9 and we have several communities uh, are benefiting under this program two wells have since been completed one at Ruperty and the other at Woweta. the two wells are providing services to the community from aquifers my name is Devani captain from Ruperty um, on behalf of the village. Um, I would like to say we are thankful for the water system and it will benefit us a lot, especially during the uh, dry season. We don't have enough water. We don't have water to wash, to cook sometimes. We barely got to scrape up water from, from other wells to get water to do our cooking and washing. I am uh, one of the um, person who will benefit from this water system because I live close by. I would like to say thank you so much and it would benefit us a lot. As a, as a woman, um, it, water is an everyday use to me. I use water every day in different areas and I would like to say thank you once again. Water is life. I must congratulate Kaiwa people personnel for assisting us in this time. We come up with your own strength with the support of the, the organization and I think so far we had in the right direction and we're looking forward for the continued support. GWI in collaboration with the Region 9 administration will also be drilling wells in Arnaputa, Kwaimata, Marakanta, Kumu, Bataranao and Shulinab. GWI is Executive Director for Infrastructure Planning and Implementation, Ramchan Jailal says, these additional six wells are scheduled to be constructed in the latter half of 2016. Right now, the, because of the heavy rainfall in the area, the contractor has, has um, moved some of his equipment just to ensure that they are maintained and, and, and to, to, to have them ready to, to recommence drilling in another few weeks. But um, the, it is it, always important and, and, and necessary when we drill, um, it's better to drill uh, not in the rainy season because the water level are extremely high in the rainy season and so you may not get to set your wells uh, at, at the right level. The support from the Brazilian Army for the safe water intervention in the region is coming through collaboration with the Civil Defense Commission. The Army is expected to start drilling wells in September. They will be working in the south and deep south in eight communities, Shia, Mawaranau, Awaranau, Aishalton, Crowdaranau, Meriwo, Achuib, and Parabara Village. Basic Needs Trust Fund will be drilling wells at Apatery, Tiger Pond, Crashwater, and Simoni. The agency also has a larger project to improve lithium water supply, which will see the refurbishing of elevated storage tanks in the Tabatinga and Culvert City housing schemes. The Basic Needs Trust Funds program uh, comes in a complete package. These projects uh, provide for drilling of the wells, construction of elevated uh, storage facilities, which are trestles, which tanks. It comes with the photovoltaic system, which is the solar panels, um, and the electrical system. Plus, it also comes with the pipelines for providing the communities with the standpipes and connecting it to the, to the um, so, so our intervention is our, our intervention is to is drilling the wells and we are working closely with the communities. In some cases we are providing the materials and the communities are undertaking the works 
to interconnect the distribution system to the, to the new wells. The regional administration will drill wells at Masara, Kweko, Taushida and Anai. Along with these interventions, GWI will also be establishing an office in Lethem where the water company will have a full-time engineer to operate and monitor the water supply system in the region. GWI's Executive Director for Infrastructure Planning and Implementation, Ramchan Jailal, says these interventions will significantly improve water security in the region, especially during the dry season, by the end of 2016. We have infrastructure in many of the communities in Region 9. But some of the communities are dense in one area and some are sparse. And so we have wells that are located in many communities. I could, um, I could pull from a, a matrix and I could see that we have more than 20 or 25 wells. These are deeper wells. Plus we have hand dog wells, uh, uh, more than 200 hand dog wells across the, the hinterland communities. But after we would have completed the drilling program, the wells under this drilling program for 2016, I would, I would say that we will be in a, in a better, better situation. I, I don't want to say in percentage, but um, with regards to community, I would say that almost all of the communities will have access to either um, underground water. In some cases, we have um, communities that are accessing water from springs, and so um, they will continue to have security through that um, source. The government is also working to unlock the business potential of Region 9 by addressing the challenges of a poor business environment with restricted access to capital and credit. Best known for its scenic views and unique flora and fauna, Region 9 is fast becoming known for its business opportunities with a growing population and its closeness to Brazil in which a thriving trade is conducted. The development of the business sector in Lethem and surrounding communities is a key part of government's effort to drive economic advancements in Region 9. The town of Lethem has most of its business operations driven by investors from Guyana's coastline and foreigners including Brazilians and Chinese. The creation of the Lethem industrial site by the previous administration was an attempt to push local entrepreneurship that remains incompleted. The Ministry of Business is moving to make this a reality, says Minister Dominic Gaskin. That has enormous potential. Again, it is up to the private sector to buy into the, um, the opportunities, but it's, it's, uh, it's another project, as you said, that, that's going to be, that is being implemented and is going to be completed by the end of next year. A part of the process to make the Lethem industrial site a reality involves the redesigning of an area to better accommodate businesses and manufacturing operations. He added that government is encouraging those who can to invest as there are no impediments to growth locally. I would like to see a lot more investments in value-added exporting um, businesses. Um, and I would like to engage the private sector in a more structured way to see how we can work together to actually achieve uh, a more diversified economy. The business minister spoke of the need for ministry officials to engage the private sector in a more structured manner. To see how we can work together to actually achieve uh, a more diversified economy and a more a, a diversification into value-added exports is um, you know my preference because we need to you know we need employment and uh, you know so we we want to increase our um, increase productivity um, and also increase opportunities for employment and the value-added sectors do provide you know th those sorts of opportunities.
especially given the variety of raw materials that we have right here in Guyana. Some initiatives include outreaches by the Ministry of Social Cohesion and the Institute of Applied Science and Technology. The assistance of these and other agencies resulted in the formal launching of the indigenous pioneer products of Rubenoni Essence, liquid soap and facial cleanser. If we, do not, if we do not believe in what we are doing, we wouldn't be able to sell it. So we have to now adopt an aggressive marketing strategy, learn and learn fast, and along with partnership. We must stay, we must satisfy our markets, produce in excess of that market, and create additions to existing markets. We must create the large picture, set goals, achieve them, treat accomplishments as accomplishments, move on to setting and accomplishing new and large goals. The launch of mega farms in various communities of Region 9 will not only help to supply regional communities with agricultural produce, but also the rest of the country and further afield. Known for its farine and other cassava byproducts, as well as peanut butter and crab oil, several communities such as Waweta and Mokomoko are moving to establish factories to expand production and their economic viability. Our building will be fully equipped. Then we can see a lot of youths, more youths being employed there in different areas. The Rubenoni Exposition showcases what the region has to offer. Thousands of visitors, local and overseas based, trek annually to the region visiting events such as the Heritage Festival, Rupununi Rodeo, Rupununi Musical and Arts Festival, and Overland Safaris. The expansion of the Eco Lodge of Saramo also attracts overseas visitors, such as research scientists, many of whom are keen to find what our native flora and fauna have to offer and perhaps benefit the rest of the world. Rather than destroying the forest, cutting down the trees and selling them, you could bring people to show them that tree over and over and they pay for it. And um, we, we have packages like jungle survival training, canoeing, hiking, uh, the cultural uh, operations because we have a group that keeps the language and the dances and the stories alive. So it helps the community to keep and be proud of their languages, the custom because it's, it's, it's the way that we have been living and surviving by for many, many years, by understanding the laws of nature. Combining that with man-made laws, I think will, will gel nicely. The need for electrical power cannot be overstated. Hence, governments move to explore the building of several sustainable power sources, including solar, wind and hydropower dams. The resuscitation of the Takatu Hydropower Project is one which will be welcomed by many residents and government is keen to rehabilitate it. The reports that we received while we were there is that the people felt that it was a, a, an elections gimmick. You know, to win the hearts and souls of the people there in Letem, right, in 1997. So the then government, they would have probably you know, just see it best to fast track this project in order to win the hearts of the people without probably giving it much thought, you know. So I think um, it might be a lot of work that we would have to, to, to put in in order to bring that whole project back on stream. Rupununi is also home to the Rupununi weavers who weave the most unique and exotic hammocks. Government is moving to ensure equal opportunities for investors across Guyana. Lethem and other hinterland communities are being encouraged to pursue opportunities with government's assistance to become economically self-sufficient as far as possible. This focus is also key to ensuring the prosperity of hinterland residents and the development of Guyana. The 
the administration has also embarked on a holistic program to promote measures which would provide support for persons facing social challenges. This next segment tells us what is being done to provide social services in the region. Recognizing the need for the provision of social services, a range of interventions including a multi-agency approach will be rolled out in the region. Minister of Social Protection, Father Lawrence, explains. In Region 9, um, here again, there are many seating social issues. And I think in Region 9, I would say without fear of contradiction that persons are looking at the monetary returns rather than focusing also at the social degradation. Um, and that is something that I think we have to bring to the fore. The regional chairman has undertaken to provide us with a building so that we can have a presence, a full presence in Region 9. Because I believe that while it is not at the level um, that the social issues as it is in Region 8, that um, it's not too far away from that. Um, and so we need to address it head on, and I look forward to that cooperation from them. There are many things that last night I was pondering about and so on, but I like to go back and speak to my technical people, and we have a discussion also with the heads of the other agencies and ministries so that we can come up with a plan to be able to address the situations here. Some of the issues affecting the region include child labor, trafficking in persons, school dropouts, and teenage pregnancy. Additionally, a number of persons are in need for public assistance and their old age pension. To address these issues, a local board of guardians was installed in the new township of Lethem. This board will assist the work of the social and welfare officers based in the township by identifying persons who meet the criteria to access public assistance. Region 9 Regional Chairman Brian Alicock welcomes the development. I'm happy that you know we have had this small but very significant ceremony of installing our local Board of Guardians. Um, and that is one development that has taken place, which after a long time it was at a lull where the Board of Guardians were not you know, they were kind of defunct. So I'm happy that the new boards have been installed. A holistic approach is being employed to tackle social issues so that the good life can be truly realized by all. We can build the best roads, have the best schools and the best hospitals and so on. But if you don't address the social issues, you're wasting money. Labor issues fall under the ambit of the Social Protection Ministry and will be addressed within the region. These will be addressed, says Head Social Development Committee Town Council, Yubal McDonnell. On the labor, one of um, our main issue of concern is that um, the, on the commercial zone, our um, Indian people especially has been employed and been exploited because they have them working overtime, and now they're, um, they're working as a percentage. When they were employed, it was, that was never on the contract or whatever, you know, but now it, they're working as a percentage. If they don't sell that week, they won't get paid. And um, they're being paid in reals, and this is Guyana. They should have been paid in Guyana dollars. The reals now is very low to our money. So when they change back this money, they get less than what they're supposed to be working for. And that is one of my main concerns on the labor. And I've visited some of the stores in Latham too and I've noticed they have teenagers working in the stores. There's child labor. And that's why I've been stressing so much for a labor officer to be in the region because some of these workers work these people and don't pay them. Other interventions are on the way which will benefit both Region 9 and the entire country. Because very soon from now, Mr. Banwari through the probation officer will be informing you of a workshop we're going to have 
whereby we expect all the board members to be present from across the 83,000 square miles of Guyana. It all, from all the regions, we expect you to be there and we expect you to come with submissions and be able to defend those submissions. Because we will be sitting to review this act which governs poor law. And I'm not going to blame the crafters of this act because I believe it was crafted for that time. Now we're in this time. And we have to ensure as a people that our law gives protection to all of our people, irrespective of where they are. Yeah. And also to take into account the diversity of our culture. Curtailing these societal ills lays the platform for residents and commuters to tangibly enjoy government's effort in agriculture, health, education, and housing and water. There are just a few of many initiatives being pursued in Region 9 as part of the government's plan to balance the standard of living in the region with the coastland. There are also measures aimed at revamping the broken education system in the region. This will provide youths in the region with various skills to prepare them to make a meaningful contribution to the society. That concludes this week's edition of Guyana 411. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. Subscribe to our website and the YouTube channel to be kept abreast of the latest developments. You can also like and follow us on Facebook and be updated as the news unfolds. Do join us again next week for another edition of Guyana 411. Thank you for watching.